Hello and welcome to today's Q uh, question and answer session. My name is Rita Rosenbach. I am the author of the book Bringing Up a Bilingual Child. I'm also the founder and driving force behind the website multilingualparenting.com as well as this Facebook a page that you are currently in. We also have a Facebook group, uh, multilingualparenting.com, that you're welcome to join to, uh, to discuss, share your ideas, challenges, and, and, um, and to discuss with other, other parents and educators about raising bilingual children. So today I am answering uh, three questions. Uh, no, actually, there are four questions that I'm answering today. They are as a question from Talitha uh, about um, which language to speak to a two-year-old who is exposed to, to four languages. Should she give up her native language and switch to another? We have David's uh, question about uh, whether they should send their son who speaks Chinese and English to a Korean Korean uh, kindergarten and elementary school. And then I had a lovely long message from Kayla um, describing how she is uh, passing on her heritage, heritage language to, to, her, to her daughter. Um, uh, oh, she and her husband are doing it. They, they, they grew up speaking English, but they now decided to, to bring back the heritage language, so, so just fantastic. And then I have Maricel's question about when to, when to start uh, teaching a child to read, in, read and write in the minority language. So we'll start with Talitha, Talitha's uh, question about, uh, about uh, choosing the language she speaks with the two-year-old boy. So they live in Spain and dad speaks Italian and she speaks Afrikaans. Uh, dad and mum speak English together, although mum also knows Italian. Um, it, the two-year-old boy goes to a crash where it's 80% Spanish and 20% English at the moment. And the question is, um, what um, um, will there be too many languages since their son will go to a public school where Valencian is also being added to the, the list of languages. So Talitha uh, asked whether she should switch from speaking Afrikaans to speaking English with her daughter. Sorry, with, the, with her son. Uh, the son is two years old. Uh, as I understand it, uh, Afrikaans is your native language, Talita. Um, so what you would be doing is to uh, switch from your mother tongue to English, although as you speak it with your husband, I understand you are fluent in it. So the, the question is, um, uh, what you need to think about is how important are the different languages that you have in the family? How important is it that your son grows up to speak Afrikaans? Um, how will, if he does not think about what will happen if he grows up not speaking it, will, um, what kind of um, effect will, um, effect will that have on his relationship to, to, to where you are from and to relatives and those uh, uh, friends and relatives who speak Afrikaans. Is it important to you? Because this, uh, this uh, if you were to, to switch from English to, from Afrikaans to English now, it will be fairly difficult for you to switch back because uh, as I understand it, you don't have much other Afrikaans support or uh, possibilities to exposure to Afrikaans where you live at the moment. Um, also, in addition to that, you, you also need to think about Italian. How much exposure does, he get, does your son get to Italian? Uh, if you 
if you switch to English and you together all of you speak English and then he also has some English at least now in, in the kindergarten he has some English uh, that language will become very strong of course if he's going to a Spanish school later on Spanish will become a, a very strong may probably the strongest language for him by time because uh, school language often takes over uh, and quickly develops to be better than the minority languages used at home so these are all things you need to take into consideration um, I do not know the reason for you speaking English together since you also speak Italian because that's one thing you need to think about if you want him to become fluent in Italian um, then think about how much time uh, does his dad have with him on in one in a one by one uh, one by one situation hello Kayla Michelle and Maricel thank you for, for for being here and when I answer your questions please please feel free to to comment hi Sandy uh, so these are the things to take into consideration consideration first of all sit down and think about how important are the different languages uh, how important is Italian how important is Afrikaans uh, if those if you feel strongly about them and and um, you feel that you need to they your you want your son to be able to uh, communicate in them then you need to emphasize those at home and use uh, preferably actually only Italian and Afrikaans mm. Since English is um, it is a language that can easily be learned later on as well. It is much more difficult for you to arrange additional exposure in Italian or Afrikaans. So if they are important, then consider whether you would switch to only having Italian and Afri Afrikaans at home, um, and then he, your son, would go to Spanish school. That's where he would learn Spanish. That they also add Valencia, and that that uh, that's fine you he will learn some valencian he, he unless he gets immersed in it he'll probably not become a fluent spe speaker of it but um, the first discussion you need to have is to to consider where your priorities lie um, and the question whether you should switch to english that's something you need to consider really carefully because um, although you are probably fluent in the language it is not your mother tongue and you would then be uh, giving up your mother tongue in in the communication with your son so discuss with with, uh, with your husband decide what the priorities are and then emphasize the languages accordingly hi david welcome um, uh, our next question is actually David's question. So, David, you have um, a, a one-year-old boy who speaks Chinese with uh, with mom and English with you, and then Chinese with the nanny. Or mom speaks Chinese and English, and you would have the opportunity to. Um, put your son in a Korean kindergarten and elementary because as I understood you you work there so it would be very convenient and easy for you to take him to school um, it is good for children to learn new languages when they're small they can pick up pick up a language so your your um, son would certainly be able to pick up Korean if he spends um, is timing kindergarten and elementary school in Korean. However, what you need to think about is what happens after the elementary school. Do you uh, do you have uh, do you have uh, the opportunity for him to continue his education in Korean? And if not, what are the the chances of uh, helping him to maintain the language? because if you are 
putting him in, in a Korean uh, kindergarten elementary school um, just for the reason that it's convenient for you to drop him off there since you work there, then um, uh, I'm not sure if that is the, the right, or actually I am sure that, that that shouldn't be the reason why you choose the school for your son. Um, you need to you need to think about how to continue with the Korean after this at the kindergarten elementary. Also, since neither you nor your wife speak Korean, you also need to consider questions like homework. How are you going to help your your um, son with the Korean? Uh, or with uh, with any homework really, uh, since since you are not familiar with the Korean Korean language, it is uh, understand in two years time. So, of course, if either you or both of you and and your your wife, if you have the time and the inclination and and the commitment to learn Korean. Um, then you would have a better chance of, of supporting your son and, and you could uh, you you could be there for him when he needs needs help but uh, that requires a lot of commitment a lot of time and uh, you your son will very quickly overtake you uh, when he if he goes to kindergarten is immersed in language because children pick up the language much quicker than yes adults um, have time to learn it it's not that we can't learn it you can learn language at any time it's just that we seldom have the time to commit as much uh, uh, of or from of uh, time from our schedules uh, to to learning a language so there are, I can what I can do afterwards I can I can put a link to a book which is about how you can learn along, alongside your your child and you could consider that if if you do if you do have the the time but otherwise you mentioned that you also have a uh, the option of a bilingual Chinese English kind kindergarten and to me that would be the the natural option but as I mentioned, think about the, the different, the different um, aspects that I brought up. What about the continuation after the elementary school? Um, because if he were to go be immersed in Korean for, for kindergarten elementary, it's a big step then to change into a Chinese uh, or an English, in English school because uh, there's a difference between a language that you just lear learn at home and you have like a, a colloquial you 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 have a, you can get along with it but then the language that is used at school is is a is at a different level so jumping in from having learned everything in Korean to either Chinese or or English it's a big jump it can be done and there's no question about it children can adapt but these are things you need to take into in, into consideration thank you david okay michelle hi michelle you have a question i'll pick this up uh, now uh, so your uh, sorry your husband is korean and you're filipina you plan to teach your children both korean english and filipino planning to do it all one parent one language but i wonder how you will teach all three as your husband is at you're welcome david as your husband is at work most of the time right um so you live in korea you're filipina i would say Although your husband works a lot, or your husband works a lot, I would still not recommend that uh, you pick up the, the Korean. Your child will learn Korean since you live there and they 
uh, if a child then goes to a Korean uh, Korean uh, kindergarten or school. And so what you can do is to, uh, I would concentrate on the Filipino uh, and make that your first language. You can then add English through games and plays and, uh, and um, like I always recommend monoling monolingual toys that only speak English. So you can have English uh, as a side. So I wouldn't do three languages. It is hard work for you um, and it is, uh, it is difficult enough for you to maintain one, let alone two uh, minority languages. So stick to Filipino with some English added on, but uh, get a solid base in Filipino to start with. And then you can have English, introduce it and, and add it a little bit more as your, your child grows. So, so not fully start with both at, from, the start, from, from the very beginning, but stick to Filipino and, and then, uh, then add the English later and leave the Korean to your husband, to other relatives. Um, this from the uh, Korean comes from media. It will be in the community and and probably in the, in the school later on. So that if you have any qu other questions, just uh, just uh, add in the comments. Hi, Francesca. So you have a situation. You're Italian. Husband is Iranian, and the three old daughter, older daughters daughters understand and speak Italian. But for the Iranian, she just understands everything, but it's just, use it just very little. So, so this is, I presume, Francesca, you live in Italy, is that correct? Or, um, and then uh, if yes, means that there is a lot of Italian, Italian, uh, um, you're welcome, Michelle. Italian exposure. Oh, Francesca, you, you, you have your daughter is three years old, right? And she understands um, Iranian and speaks Italian. It is very normal that a bilingual child picks up this the the language that they get um, they get more exposed to and start speaking that 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 is. That is how, how it works. It's always the minority language that needs more support. Um, what I would recommend you, there are, the more you speak, the, the, the easier it is for, for your child to start using their minority language. Uh, just a lot of different types of exposure. Um, you can, what you can do, like I, I mentioned already before, and what I do actually myself with my grandson as well, we, I use hand, hand puppets that speak only the minority language. So we have several hand puppets uh, that speak only Swedish now. So when he, uh, when he comes, um, he knows that those puppets can only he understand if he says something in Swedish. So he, he's, he, uh, his strong dominant language is English. But uh, Swedish comes out when he knows that he now needs it. So the the thing is that those are the two important things. It's the want and the need. Um, the need there must be a need for the child to to speak the speak the language, and then so create situa situations where where the where um, a child is immersed in Iranian. If you have like, uh, if you have uh, family and friends or others who speak Iranian, try to create those immersive experiences where she will hear Iranian all around her. Um, bringing, uh, if you have like uh, Iranian songs, play those in the background, and your husband should be really, really um, um, supportive and, and giving, giving like um, 
positive feedback every every time when when she understands says, hey you understand it and and then uh, try to to get her to want her want make her want to to use the iranian she knows I mean, you mentioned that she uses very little that is actually really good that she uses at least little so every time she uses Iranian then you should show your how happy you are and, and how proud you are of her when she's using that that word and then you can if you use this one word then then expand on that word and and use show that uh, communicate with her using that word that she used so so to spur her on to be to use even more of the language if you go to the website multilingualparenting.com and uh, type in search word motivate and motivation then you will find a lot of different articles on on these very, uh, this very topic on on how to encourage a child to use the minority language i'm i'm sure she she will she will uh, do fine um let me just see if there so those were the 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 please uh, add ask any additional uh, questions that uh, that you you have. So um, to Kyla, Kyla, if you're hi, Kyla, if you're still still um, on, thank you for your lovely long message, uh, which actually made my heart sing because. Uh, I can I can see from from how you're writing that you've been inspired by the articles that uh, that are on on our website, and I'm so happy to hear that that you have decided to bring back your heritage language, although you and your husband, so the heritage language Tagalog, um, although your your um, own skills and your husband's skills are not as as fluid as your parents were because you grew, both grew up in in the us and um, and your parents didn't speak tagalog with you but you have still uh, through listening to others speak it uh, you have um, you have been able to pick it up to an extent so you can um, lead a uh, basic conversation you can understand everything so you have what is called a rece your receptive re receptive bilingualism so you can understand everything but you're struggling to exp express yourself although you can carry a simple conversation so that's really good so you have been working hard on improving your own tagalog to be able to pass it on to your two-year-old daughter and I, I i can't um express how how proud i am for all of you that you've done this and and really really well done that that you have taken this challenge on because it's not an easy one when it's um it's it is not your your strongest language but you have the advantage of having your having your um um husband support and the extended family support so you have those other people that that will be able to to help you and to support you so and you you should be proud when you think about that your daughter will grow up with the much more in-depth understanding of her own background she will be able to take part of the culture in in a completely different way when when she will be fluent in tagalog and um, i'm happy to hear that you've got uh, your parents or her your daughter's grandparents who speak uh, tagalog with her and uh, i i can understand since they are now used to speaking english that it can be difficult for them to to remember to speak Tagalog but it is so important so bring this up to discussion with with your parents not just by reminding them um, that speak please speak Tagalog but, but by explaining why you have done it why it is so important and and how you need their help and um, 
and uh, since they are fluent in Tagalog, they, they are um, such an important resource and, and an expo um, a source of exposure to the, to the language for your daughter. So please keep reminding them, consider even having, at least when she's with you, if you could switch to speaking Tagalog, all of you, so she would be uh, get used to a situation uh, where everybody is speaking Tagalog. Uh, and um, then why not introduce a fine if somebody speaks English instead, at least for those who fully know the Tagalog. Uh, I, I have an article about uh, learning, learning um, oh, how to remember to speak speak uh, the the minority language so I'll, I'll add a link to that afterwards thank you very much um right michelle you had an additional question your you and your husband speak korean as he doesn't know english um I mean, no, it no, it will not affect. Uh, and basically, children grow up uh, multilingual in in the most diverse situations. And in this case, you have no choice uh, but to speak Korean uh, with, with your husband. So that's the language. So just that's just the base, and that's fine. You will speak Korean uh, with with your husband. That's the way that we, there will be more Korean in the home as well. So that's fine. You can stick, but always when you speak directly with with your child, then um, use your mother tongue and then add the English, um, as I mentioned um, before. Thanks. And I have Sylvia. Um, right. Now I... When... Let me just see. I'm trying to find your the question scroll by here, so I I can't can't see. So Sylvia, can you please repost your question uh, about Slovakian and, and reading or writing? Um. Sorry, I'm just uh, flicking through. Okay, oh, sorry, Sylvia, I just managed to get your question. Um, so, Sylvia, your Slovakian husband is English and you live in the UK. He's uh, using Slovakian with you and you're worried if, um, if he will switch to English or he will stop uh, speaking Slovakian. Um, in this case, the, if you keep consistently keep to speaking Slovakian only, even when he comes home and speaks or uh, comes home from school and is excited and speaking speak English speaks English to you, that's fine. Answer in Slovakian, and keep on um, keep don't do not change the routine that you've had with him. It will. It, it might be difficult sometimes, but you just have to persist and be patient. My both bad, my, my both daughters are adults now, and uh, but and we have lived in the UK for twenty years, but we still only speak Swedish with each other. It's it's such a deep grained routine that this is what we always do. We only if there is uh, we only switch to English if we have to because of, of who, who we're with or in, in some other situation otherwise default language is uh, is um, um, is Swedish for us and Sylvia I would recommend that you would read Slovak only just because of, of this reason um, and with regards to the uh, grammar, or you mean, do you, 
grammar will come naturally. You you wouldn't teach normally teach grammar to a, a child who is learning acquiring the language. Um, if you mean when you want to uh, teach him to read and write, then listen to the last question, Maricel. Uh, that will be the same answer to your question about the reading and writing. And then we have June's question. Um, you are bilingual Japanese English, raising seven and four year old children. We uh, so. So it's how to maintain the English that uh, that your children have already learned. If you want, since you now live in Japan and they go to Japanese schools, the the idea would be if you were to speak English with them, them all the time, because the more uh, space you give Japanese in in your relationship with with your children, the the more Japanese will take over. Um, I think my recommendation would be to, to stick to English only if that is possible, because when you say that. Um, you try to speak English to them, but it's hard as Japanese is easier for the kids and even me sometimes. The less you speak English, the more Japanese will take over. So think about how important is uh, the English is. If it is important, then I would try to uh, speak, uh, stick, stick to English as much as possible. Of course, if there are situations that you really st struggle with, uh, that you need um, that you need to express, you can't express yourself in English, then switch to Japanese for those discussions. Um, languages are about communication and languages should not stop the communication. So as and when it really is necessary, then switch, uh, switch to English, oh, sorry, Japanese. Otherwise, I would recommend that you uh, switch to English if it is if it is important that they maintain their English for you. <laughs> Thank you, Kyla, for your feedback. Yes, I, I know you, you and your husband will be the ones um, uh, you um, um, struggling more, more than your daughter, but the more you do it, the more you get used to it. Just stick with it. It is the initial, initial habit making that, that that is the most difficult. So you say it's it's about 24, 24 days to to create a habit, and and just do it even when it, it feels it feels uh, difficult because you will be so so happy that you did it. Once it gets easier, it it you will notice that it. Uh, um, that your your own language will improve uh, so much. Discuss about different topics, maybe those that you're not so fluent in. Ask your your parents um, to to help you and and bring in new vocabulary. Yes, it will be hard. It won't be easy, but you will be so happy you did it if you stick with it. So that's now we come to the last question. And Maricel, that is your question. Your your question was last on the list here. So, so, so your question uh, was uh, so the situation. Uh, your situation, Mari, Maricel, is that you speak French, um, Dad speaks Spanish, and then you speak. Uh, do you live in Ireland? So, so she so the community language is English and uh, school will also be English. Um, so you're asking when to introduce Spanish and English. And this is also an answer to Sylvia about, was it Sylvia? Sorry if I'm getting the, the, the names mixed up, about Slovakia, Slovakian. 
So there is no set age when to start um, teaching a child to, to read and write. Um, the best cue you have is to start when the child shows interest in it. Uh, starts asking you asking you about letters uh, to entice your your child to do that have uh, have toys that there are letters letters in for example puzzles uh, building blocks fridge magnets and and then you can mention mention those the 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 sounds that that those uh, letters represent in your language and uh, another thing that you can do is to when you read with your child so sit next to each other and then follow the lines and the words when you speak so your child learns to make the connection between the spoken word and the, the written word so they can make those connections and then add to that those different uh, different um, toys that you have the letters with so um, paying attention to when your child starts to show interest in in letters and reading and writing a child can learn to read and write two languages uh, in parallel it just as like they can learn to speak it uh, they can also learn to to read and write it so you don't need to be afraid of that a child um, can uh, keep them them separate and even if there is a little bit of mixing they will they will learn they will pick it up and they will learn soon but as i said there's no set age you if your child is interested now um and then then you can start now a child does not get, get confused with with the, with the languages yes they might mix them uh, sometimes but they uh, they they um, they do not get confused by it they there is no permanent damage although they would mix sometimes mix something i i would leave the phonics to the school that's my um my recommendation uh, and you concentrate on on your language only um so bec because um, it is if, if you were to teach uh english phonics as well then you would have to do that by speaking english and i wouldn't recommend that you you, you switch uh, um stick stick to your stick to your language and and uh, and use you, you teach your language and leave english to school they will learn and uh, schools are very good at that in school there is no expectation at school that they know it before they go, go to school so so those were the questions i had today thank you very much for attending and and, and being so active and asking questions um uh, I'm so happy to be to be able to help and there will be another Q&A session in two weeks time. So share the word. If you know someone else who, who wants to ask something, send them in, add them, add them, um, add them on uh, the website. Uh, so Sylvia, you had another question. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, what about multilingual children with language disorder and dyslexia? Uh, oh, that's a big, big, uh, big question. Uh, with regards to language dis disorder, if the child has it in one language, they will have it in all their languages. They're normally the same with dyslexia, dyslexia but that depends on, on how how the the written and the spoken word um, connect for example in a language like finnish which is one of the languages I, I learned growing up it is written exactly as it is spoken so um, dyslexic children have less problems because they can just write down what they hear but they, for example with english um, that will have a much bigger effect um, so 
just because a child has a language disorder, uh, there is no need. Uh, um, learning more languages will not make it make it worse. So that's that's all for today. Thank you very much for attending. And uh, yes, keep on speaking your languages. Thank you. Bye.